All right. I am so excited to be sitting across from Danessa Myricks herself. I have been such a fan of your products, oh, thank you. your content, <laughs> your mission, everything that you do is so special. So I'm so excited to get into oh my this. God, thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. Some very amazing people have sat in this chair. So oh my gosh. I feel very, very, very lucky. And, and you. you are amongst them. And the fact that you complimented my makeup, I'm just like on a high right now. I can't because... stop staring at you. <laughs> But you know what? What I love about your products that they it's this whole self-expression thing, this ability to push yourself maybe outside of your comfort yeah, zone a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But the innovation and we, we there's so much to discuss, but I want to take it all the way back to the beginning. Okay. I believe you were 30. Yes. You were doing marketing at a magazine. Yes. The magazine Folded, yes. And you had to kind of reinvent your life. Yeah. And I want to hear about what that's like because I know a lot of people want to chase their dreams, but they feel like I'm too old or I, you know, I should have done it in my 20s. Yeah. Or it's, it's never too late. Yeah. Um, even if you're 40, it's never too late or 50, 60. Yeah. yeah. What was that like for you? Scary as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It was super scary. But I think, you know, if you think about it for a minute and think about like, what if, there's a, what if can go in either direction? Mm -hmm. What if I don't? Right. Right. And what if I do? So what if I don't? The don't didn't look too great for me. You know, I'm a single mom with two, uh, two kids, like zero dollars. What am I going to do? Start another job? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? If they would hire me at that, I'm 30, you know, I'm so into my life. As a, It just felt daunting. And then get a job doing what? Right. At that point, I was just still just trying to discover where I fit. Um, I was just working to work, you know. I, I don't know if you ever heard the expression, like, first and only, I think, um, Chanda Rhimes uh, uh, talked about it. When you're the first in your family to do a thing, mm. you're the one that people are looking for to make the difference, to create the change. I was the first one to graduate college in my family. My father's greatest wish was that I would have like a pension and retire with a 401k. Yeah. I mean, because that was big dreaming for him, you know. Where's your family from? My father is from the South. My mom okay. is from Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, they were big dreamers and sacrificed a lot just so we could have possibilities. So I'm just like, okay, I, daddy, must I? Like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> why? But I, I really wanted to, like, feel good about getting up every day and wanted to have some purpose and wanted to be excited. Like, my soul wasn't being fed. I was just feeding my children at that point. So for me, it was like, you know, the risk is I'll be right here where I am. Um, and I was so, I'm, I'm thankful every day that I decided to just give it a go. Um, when did the passion for makeup develop? It's so funny because I always felt in my heart that I was a creative person, but on the outside, I wasn't very creative. I was like the most boring person, quiet, um, didn't really talk, read tons of books. I was a, a loner, very much an introvert. Mm -hmm. um, but this, uh, the publishing company I was working at, they published black hair magazines. And I, oh, like hype hair. No, it wasn't hype okay, hair. Okay, because I remember like, yeah, the that black whole hair era. magazine. Oh yeah, of course. Like that's how my career really got started during that phase. But they published like salon hair magazines. Okay. And so what I was doing is selling photo shoots um and doing the marketing for the publishing company. And I just remember seeing my first photo shoot and just seeing the artists that came in, like they were cool. Like, I was corny. <laughs> they were cool. You know, they had their own style, their own flair. They just felt... I think it was the freedom that really excited me. And then when I saw their work and, you know, how they made people feel with the transformations, it's like, it just felt so purposeful. It was art. It was beautiful. It was... It was all of the things that I couldn't say about where my life was right now. And so I'm always wondering, like, if I was, like, working in a photo gallery or if I was, like, working with a painter, would I be painting? Like, it was just the art that just really drew me in. Mm. And so it's what I knew and what I saw. And so that was the first thing I said. Well, I'm a makeup artist <laughs> <So you laughs> with no makeup. <laughs> but 
you're self-taught, entirely self-taught. Mm-hmm. And yeah. now you train thousands of, I don't know if you have numbers of the amount of makeup artists that you've trained over. A lot. A lot, <laughs> a, a lot. lot. And you know, the consistent thing is every makeup artist I've ever worked with loves your products. Like you are a makeup artist favorite, oh you know? Oh, um, that, that's amazing. And to hear that at 30, you didn't know how to do it at all is incredible. So I've read that you looked at a lot of books that you kind of trained yeah. yourself. Mm-hmm. What books did you look at and and how did you self-teach? So I feel like my whole life I've been self-teaching because uh, we didn't have money. So, um, But during this time, I was like, okay, I was just asking everybody, who's the best makeup artist? Like, who's the best makeup artist? And the two names that came up all the time were Kevin Aquan and Sam Fine. Oh. So The Making Faces book, by the way. I mean, is there any other book that exists? And you know, it's so, you know, you should actually do a coffee table book. Just going to throw that marketing idea your way because I feel like that art of like the makeup coffee table books, we're not seeing them anymore. And it's such a special thing. I've been dying to do it. You should. I've been dying to do it. You know, I think because I was so impacted and inspired early on from mm-hmm. seeing a book like that. I think there's a little like, okay, it has to be so good. Or else. And it will be because it's you. <laughs> and it will be. So, okay, so Sam Fine, yeah. Kevin Aquan. Yeah, those are the two. And I think what they, you know, I read those books and I didn't understand anything. It was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to need more because I don't get it. But what I think how it really impacted me was comparing what I was seeing visually in those books and what I would see if I like flipped through a magazine or I just looked, you know, at other people's makeup. For both of them, their work made you feel something. Yes. Right? And so I was just like, okay, well, the one thing that I know, if I want to be great in this space, people need to be able to feel it. And I think that's just the baseline that I had. And just over the years, it it just kind of just evolved. Like, where does that come from? Um, Which is why I lean in so heavy to contouring and face shaping. And Mm. I'm so obsessed with light on the face and how it impacts, like, the mood and why colors inspire me so much on a face and why texture is, like, such a big deal for me because I'm just, like... Every face is like a painting. It's like a work of art. And like, what are people going to feel when they see this? Yeah. And then what are people going to feel when they use it? Like those are, mm. it's always running through my mind. It's such a special and unique thing to have running through everything that you do that you want people to feel something, right? Because I yeah. think it comes through in your content. It comes through in the products themselves. But then also when you do makeup for other people, this idea that you feel something, it's like an electric thing yes. when you look at the work. <laughs> um, and someone can be technically skilled, but not know how to convey emotion Mm -hmm. through makeup and that's it's kind of like that's why I love teaching because and I'm also really happy that I didn't go to school Mm -hmm. because I would have been told what I need to do and and what's acceptable and you can't do this and you can't do this I would have been a different artist today Right. right but I think because all I had to guide me was what, what I'm feeling in my gut. And that's all I've been able to share with people from the beginning. Like, how does this make you feel? Like, you know, when you look at this, what do you see? What's missing? What do you, you know what I mean? It's, it's how I teach. Um, and I, I, I don't like to teach rules. Like, there are some things that just are true. It's like gravity. Like, if you jump off a building, you will fall and splat, right? So what are, some- those, <laughs> what are those, like, always true rules in makeup? I mean, just... Uh, it, Things that are really like based on in art and in science, like what lighter shading does, what darker shading mm. does, what, you know, what shine does on the face, anything reflective, like those things are constant. Um, what contrast means, like when you create contrast, you're going to create a more dynamic effect. So like you decide how much contrast mm. you want to have. And what does that mean for you? Is it color? Is it texture? You know what I mean? So they're, they're more like generalizations, like things that exist for everyone, but they're open for interpretation, right? And so I feel like whenever I'm teaching, I'm like, okay, these things, I always start off, these things are true, right? These things will always be true. And what does it mean for you? And I think it allows people to just become, you know, who they are on the inside, be the artist that they want to be. And there's no like right or wrong. And that's what I love about this space so much. There is no right or wrong. It's like, how does it feel for you? If it's feeling good, it's the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you make a lot of people feel good. One of the clips that has gone viral and millions of people have seen is Cat Graham sitting. You're going to make me cry. 
in your chair. No, I mean, I get emotional thinking about it because she was being seen by you and she had felt that so many makeup artists did not see her. What was that exchange like in the moment? I, I, I want to cry right now. It's so real for me. And what's crazy is that I didn't expect it, especially from her. Um, I wouldn't have expected that she was experiencing those things. Mm -hmm. um, what people don't know is what happened prior to that moment where I, I, I honestly was having a lot of imposter syndrome that day. And I was just like, oh, why did she choose me? Like, there's so many people who would love to, like, you know, be there with her. And she really wanted me to be there. And when I walked in, she literally jumped out of her chair and got on her knees and like welcomed me like I was like a queen and like gave me the biggest hug. And I was just like so overwhelmed. Like all this time I was so afraid to like not meet her expectation. Mm -hmm. And she was just so happy that me like I yeah. was like literally I was crying from the moment I got there but I wasn't letting her see right and then that exchange is like she is such a beautiful human her energy like if you if you stand next to her you know just who mm -hmm. she is and how beautiful she is she made every moment of that day special she made everybody on that set feel so important and just in that moment for me it just reinforced the importance of what we all do Yes. Not just us as makeup artists, it's our presence as artists on this planet, as creators, like how we impact the world. Like that's what I felt in that moment, like a sense of responsibility on an even grander scale. Uh, yeah, I will never forget that day. I will never forget that experience with her. And um, yeah, I, it, it was... It was one of the, it was for the books. It's something I'm going to tell my grandchildren for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. And also just to hear how many people, mostly women of color, that have felt truly neglected and harmed in a makeup artist chair, yeah. right? Like mm -hmm. not even that they weren't being catered to, that, but that actually they've had makeup so bad that mm -hmm. they felt unable to do their job as a model or an actor on yeah. set. And it's 2023 and this is still happening. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, which is why. You know, it's important for everyone to understand it's not just about, like, shades you have in your range. Right. Like, that is just scratching the surface. It's the intention behind, mm -hmm. like, everything you do through and through, right? And what did it mean when you created those shades and who were you thinking of? And how we participate in beauty is so important. It is. Um, and, you know, when I think about that moment, I think that hug that we shared, I was thinking about my whole lifetime as a woman, as a black woman, as a dark-skinned black woman. Just I thought about all of the criticisms that I endured just about being who I am. I, I thought about all of those sad moments where people telling me I'm unattractive, I'm ugly, or just not even acknowledging my presence or existence in the space, whatever space that was, was it corporate or whatever it was. I felt like, I felt our history, like the, yes. the pain of our, our entire history in that moment um, and the burden that we have to carry every day with a smile. Yes. yes. And the fact that we can go on every day smiling and still pushing and still doing our best work the best we can in spite of it all. I, I felt all of that. I felt all of that for her, for me, and for everyone else who has to still today deal with that. Um, it's kind of crazy. It makes me super sad. Like, I'm not going to cry today. <laughs> I said no crying on the podcast. You, you can cry if you need to. But yes, it was a beautiful healing moment. Um, I do want to talk about your corporate experience because mm -hmm. you were the director of product innovation for mm -hmm. Benefit. Yeah. And it's so funny. To this day, the only iconic product that I associate with Benefit is the Brow Collection, which was one of the products you developed, correct? <laughs> yeah, that's that we, yeah, I led the launch of that Brow Collection and it's something that I'm so, so proud of. Yes. Yeah. And you, you you've had a chance to work with chemists at prestige brands, at drugstore brands. Mm -hmm. What would people be surprised to learn about the formulation and makeup development process? I think people, and, and this is not specific to benefit, just um, my entire journey, I think people will be surprised to know how 
few people understand uh, deeper skin tones mm. um, and formulations. And I've been all over the world, every part of this planet, you name it, I've been there. I've worked in labs in every space. And it's so foreign. Right. It's so far, like it's so foreign. And it's it it's more than us needing more um, artists who care about learning deeper complexions or learning to work on oil complexions. It's on every level. It's chemists. It's, you know, people who are testing the shades in the labs before they send it to um, whatever brand X. Like, there's literally, it's so foreign. It'd be like, no, this looks perfect. But no, I've tried it and it looks like, it's not even a consideration. It's not even a consideration to bring somebody in the room who looks like as close as possible to the person right. that we're creating this for. for. Right. It's like really people do believe there there's one skin tone that exists, right. <laughs> like fair. And then we'll just make it like darker and darker and darker and that yeah. will work. It's like you yeah. start at the standard, which is for white skin. And then, and then everything else just add black. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? It's right. kind of crazy. What's even crazier for me is, you know, in developing products, you know, labs want to send you sample, samples, try this, we're making this thing, what have you. And they'll even send you things that look nothing like you. Mm. Like, it's not even considered that she won't even be able to really evaluate this. Um, and to not even consider to try. Right. You know, it's, it's really crazy to me. There's so much missing on so many levels. And I think... Uh, I, being in these rooms over the course of my 23 years in the business and, and hearing the conversations about how they think people use beauty, consume beauty, like who shops for beauty. I can't even tell you how many times that I've heard in rooms that black people don't buy makeup. What? They don't wear makeup. <laughs> Which is they don't buy the shades. It's I mean, so crazy. Or right. what, you know, what certain people can afford or not afford sure. or we're yeah. never going to sell this skew or we're never going to sell this color. Right. Like it, it's crazy. And and they're really genuine and serious right. in these conversations. Like we need more people uh, with more diverse backgrounds in more of these rooms or else things will never change. Yeah. At, at every single level from the lab yeah. to the development room mm -hmm. to marketing yep. to, yeah, shade, shade range is almost like a cop out. Like, exactly. Oh, we have a diverse shade range, exactly. but what's the process like to exactly. get there? Now, I want to talk about the Yummy Skin formulation. You've just released a new, is it the Yummy Skin Serum? Yeah, it's a skin tint. Yeah. Skin tint. Mm -hmm. Complexion products I really feel are like an art, right? Like to get a complexion product right takes so much work. That's why I feel like there are a handful of like holy grail foundations that you hear people talk about yeah, over and over again. Yeah. A lot of people try to do foundations and complexion products and skin tints, but not everyone gets it right. Um, I'm wearing your yummy skin today. I think I'm shade eight Yay. and nine. Um, <laughs> but I love your complexion products, Thank the way they you. feel on the skin, the way they look on the skin. It, it, it's that your skin, but better. Um, You're making I, me so happy right now. <laughs> well, and but because I know you've spent so many years developing for other brands, you were able to probably go into the development of products for your own brand once yeah. you decided you were going to take that jump with a lot of thoughtfulness and a really clear point of view of like what you wanted. And I would love to hear about the development of your complexion products. Yeah, it's so interesting. So doing complexion is super scary for all of the reasons why you can imagine. Um, and I really wanted to just think about my life as an artist and the artists that I've worked alongside and, and I know our needs as artists. Um, but at the same time, all of the concerns that I've heard from consumers on the other end, um, like either there's not enough shades or there's a hundred shades and I still can't find my shade or I just really wanted to educate as I develop and I wanted to make it a little easier for people to explore, right? And so the first complexion that I, product that I made was the Vision Cream Cover Foundation, which is like a, a pro secret. And to be honest, that range has 26 shades. In the history of me doing makeup, I've only used six of them because as artists, we don't need a lot of, right? right? And so... I started just with the pros and just really just making something that's special for us. It's this formula that 
it's like you, it's a concentrate. You could do anything with it. But when I started thinking about like my mom and my cousins and like people who are shopping, let's say at Sephora, like they need a little bit more, right? And I wanted to create something that felt special. I wanted to make a statement that um, a black female founded brand can create for everyone. Yes. So I wanted that to be very clear. And I wanted it to be very clear that we can create on a high level. So I really spent a lot of time researching, testing, um, to make really beautiful formulas that can live everywhere, whether you have mature skin, whether you're new to makeup, mm -hmm. whether you're a supermodel or whether you're you're textured or whatever it is, everybody can feel themselves living in it. And and that really was the goal. I wanted it to be super easy to use. Yes. I wanted it to last you the rest of your life, which is not the best business model, but that <laughs> that's just how I create. Um, and I wanted that kind of one and done feeling. Like if you're going to splurge on a, a, a cosmetic product, it should give you everything that you need or close to it. Yes. Right. So the Yummy Collection was about that hybrid world infusing skincare uh, with cosmetics and just making it super, super easy, but making it feel good on your skin. You, yes. I'm so happy that you said what that. Are, what are the ingredients that make it just, like it blends in, it sinks into your skin in a way that I haven't experienced with a lot of products. And to your point about it being easy, I love watching your Get Ready With Me videos because you use your hands use a lot. Hands. And I'm like, oh, she's like me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she uses her hand. I mean, I, use, I definitely use my hands. And yes. I think most people do. They're just like really quick. You know, most people aren't doing makeup like you see on Instagram. Right. You know what I mean? Like my best friend, like I, she, if I gave her a brush, she's like, what do I do with this? Right. right? Um, so I think about that. I think about people in their real lives. And so like, I think there are things that consistently everybody wants. They want, um, everyone needs hygiene. Hydration. Yes. So like the baseline, just your hyaluronic um, acid, things like niacinamide, things oh, like antioxidant the... uh, protection. Okay. Like, yeah, when you look at yummy and you read that ingredient list, like it's the real deal. Um, and we also back everything up with clinical testing and we're always super excited by oh, the results. Wow. Yeah. You do your own clinical testing. Yeah. So we not only do like tons of testing internally on panels of women right. and, and men or anybody who consumes makeup, but we also do that, the ver get it verified, all of these claims through external testing. Wow. And we do that just so it's not just words, it's real. So what you're feeling on your face is, is, is real, yeah. right? People feel hydrated. People feel like their skin looks more youthful. Yes. Um, they feel like their skin is getting better as they wear it. Um, like our glow serum, and one of the claims that we got back was that the hydration level of your skin um, is amplified by 108% upon application. Like wow. that was, you know, things like that. Like it's real. Uh, the blurring bomb powder, another one. Like I was like, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this. This is going to be like the Rolls Royce product. We're going to see ingredients you've never seen before. And What's in the blurring bomb powder? Oh my gosh. Can I just tell you the pandemic was the best thing that happened for me in terms of like being able to have time to, to create, research yes. and to create, you know, that is a very unique blend. There's nothing that exists like it in the world because we're the first to use that ingredient called Upsolite in a hot pour. And basically, Upsolite has the highest blurring index and it has the highest absorption index of anything in cosmetics. Interesting. Yeah. It's, now, for blurring, yeah. I'm used to hearing about dimethicone. Mm -hmm. Is this similar to that? No, this is like next generation. Okay. This is like out of this world. Like you've never seen it before. They use it in sports before. Interesting. Um, but it hasn't been used in cosmetics. We were the first to use it in this way. So and good. it's like that. You, it's like having a product that's doing all the thinking for you. Mm -hmm. um, it reads your skin and gives you what you need. It's mm -hmm. balancing your skin. You're getting the retention of hydration, but at the same time, this like crazy absorption of sweat and oil. But you don't have to do anything. You just slap it on your face and let it do what it does, right? It looks super natural. You don't have to layer tons of things. It's a one and done. Like that's when I think about like our contribution to beauty as a brand, like I really want to create things that make a difference that people remember and they're like, wait, this has changed my routine or yes. this moved the beauty conversation forward. I, I really get excited about stuff like that. Yeah. So um, you'll never see us like, okay, we launched lipstick. Not that that's a bad thing. It's like, if we're going to launch something, like 
what we're what we're working on is becoming like a legacy brand. Like yeah. you know, fifty years from now, a hundred years from now, like we're still here, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, we took the time um, to do it really really well so yes. when i hear you say that you enjoy wearing it you use it you love how it feels like like i want to get up and run back to the <laughs> office and make something else like yeah. seriously. i mean the the product innovation is incredible i think about even your eye palettes and the way that they reflect light and it wasn't so long ago that it was hard for people of color to find mm-hmm. products that would give you color payoff like it really wasn't that no, long really ago wasn't. that I'm thinking like even like three or four years ago, it was even hard to find. Yeah. Um, and I think this is the, is this the velvet mat that I'm wearing? In yeah, trance? you have trance on. Like as soon as you walked in, I was like, is that is trance? trance? <laughs> yes. Um, and it's so interesting because even in the palette, it looked more purple, but then mm-hmm. it changes in the mm-hmm. light. So I just, I just know there's a level of like science that's happening oh, as you develop products. The- How are you making these incredible eyeshadows? So we're looking for... Blends that don't exist, like we're constantly like, it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough. Um, We want you to experience something you haven't experienced before, right? So it's not like we're finding the shade somewhere and we're like, we're launching it. It was like, okay, this exists, how can we push it even more? And we're just pushing with formulation. I'm working with labs that like are not afraid to try new things Um, and to... Yeah, it's a lot of pushing. It's a lot of pushing. Creating products that don't exist is so much more rare than I think people realize. I don't know if people realize how much people are going into labs and saying, just recreate this mm-hmm. and we're maybe we'll, we'll, change, yeah. we'll change like maybe one thing yeah. and then we're going to slap our name on it. There's a specific word for it. I don't know it. It's like, it's not dupes. What's like the like the industry term for it? It's like white labeling or... Yeah, like it's... Essentially, like every you can private label or every lab is creating so that they can mass produce this formula someplace else for multiple brands. Yeah, though. for multiple brands. A lot of people don't know that they're wearing something you know at X price that is also available at this other price, and it's too. the same yeah. formulation. Same thing. And the same ingredients. Mm -hmm. And so to do something new, and I didn't even know that you did clinical trials. I I should have caught that in my research because I also know how expensive it is to do clinical Mm -hmm. studies. And what most people do is they rely on third-party clinical trials about the ingredients. Mm -hmm. And they'll say clinically proven to blah, blah, blah. Someone else has done that clinical trial about the efficacy of vitamin C. They haven't invested. So the fact that you're doing that is incredible. I think it's important. I think it's important that people know that we're validating the things that we're creating. Sure. And but also yeah. the fact that you're self-funded yeah. doing this <laughs> is incredible, right? Because people raise millions and millions of dollars to be able to do product innovation. Mm-hmm. For you to be able to push the envelope in terms of product innovation, it, I mean, it's just incredible. I appreciate that. Thank it's you. Incredible. Thank you. We talked about makeup trend. You know, you talked about color and makeup trends. There's this whole soft glam minimal. I mean, I feel like every day there's like a new this, term this for every day, really. It used to yeah. be like no makeup makeup. <laughs> now it's soft glam. Like there's always a word for it. Now you have always been someone that embraces color and isn't afraid of color. How do you feel about the soft glam minimalism makeup moment that's happening now? Yeah, you know, I think as a woman I'm a different woman every day, depending on the occasion, depending on how much time I have. So I think all of these different styles of makeup live in all of us, right? And so I'm never one to say this is in, this is not in. It's really about um, helping people discover which one of these things works best for them and whatever moment they're in in their life, right? I know for me, every day, I'm like basic Betty. I'm like, (laughs) I'm in the car. Is there a stoplight? Okay, let me put something on. Like, that's me in the everyday, right? But then those moments, I want a full beat. And then there's, you know, but I think what people are discovering is that regardless of whether their style of makeup is, whether you like a full beat, whether you like to, supernatural people are falling in love with their skin i think that's something that the pandemic has done yes. made people like really pay attention to their skin and so now you hearing the soft glam all of these things is really like more skin forward yes beauty yeah right um however you love to live in it whether it's mad or whether it's doing whatever people are falling in love with 
them yeah. more yeah. and feeling more comfortable in their own skin. And I think that's where all these new expressions um, are really baselining from. That totally makes sense. That's a good assessment. For people that want that look of my skin, but better. Yes. What are like maybe, let's say two, I want to say three. Let's say like, what are two products to get that like my skin, but better look? Oh my goodness. Uh, all right. <laughs> when people make me choose between my children, it's so hard. Um, I think go-tos would be the new tint and bomb powder. Like if you love a like a really quick pea size, put it on your face and you look polished and you feel youthful and you feel like you got everything you need mm -hmm. and your skin is balanced and, and with subtle correction and you feel like, okay, I'm mm -hmm. me, but a little better. Yes. With a nice dewy finish, then that's the tint. Okay. And if you want that same effect with more of a natural matte finish, that would be bomb powder. Okay. Okay. Those are two good, solid recommendations. Yeah. <laughs> now I have to get into your skincare. One, you have gorgeous skin. Oh my gosh. Thank you. But two, I've also had the experience of removing some of your products and <laughs> I had to whip out the cleansing oils. I yes, had to get yes, the heavy D because, yes. you know, wearing makeup is great and fabulous and I love wearing makeup, but it is so important to get that skin like mm -hmm. clean, clean, clean yeah. afterwards. Yeah. And you don't want your face to go through a bunch of trauma cleaning your face. So it's like you've got to have the right removal products and then you've mm -hmm. got to put the moisture back in. So what is like your nighttime skincare routine? Like what are your go-to products? I love oils and I love Same. cleansing oils, cleansing yeah. balms. Like for me, I like feeling the hydration. Yes. I like like that gentle, it's going to be okay. I got you kind yes. of make a removal. Yes. I like it like slow and easy yes. and delicate and I want my f my skin to feel like enriched and alive afterwards so I'm constantly slathering with oils I think the the cleansing oil that I'm using most right now is the Elemis oh the naked cleansing balm yeah. or one of the scented ones yeah no not the scented I think the naked the, yeah. cleansing balm yeah. yeah I use that a lot and sometimes I'm literally just like drenching my face in facial oils first and then I go through the cleansing process. It feels much better. But what I think has helped me a lot is um, investing in like microcurrent tools. Okay. So are you a new face? So I haven't tried it. Okay. I have it, but I haven't tried it yet. Um, I've tried um, like Dermaflash and okay. Dermapore. Yes. Um, and um, there's a beauty wand that I use um, by a company called B3. And literally, I think just shaking the skin up and getting everything out the pores is really the key. So what does the beauty wand do? Is it like, how, how do you use it? Ooh, I mean, you can use it for everything. You can use it, um, you could put like a... Um uh, a little cloth on top and use it with your cleansing, uh, with your facial wash. And it kind of just kind of, it's this gentle vibration mm. that lifts everything out of the pores, right? I use it, I love using it after like skincare or after I apply my oils because it really just helps all of your skincare that's really soak into the skin, penetrate. Mm. Um, so you get the, uh, all of the efficaciousness up. Is that a word? Efficaciousness? I think Efficacy. So. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. The efficacy. Thank you. Of all your products and it just feels good it feels like you're like loving on your face okay. and so especially if you're somebody who needs it to happen fast it really just helps speed up the process I need to get this wand oh you'll love it do you have a go-to moisturizer Ooh, I, I mean I'm a ham I love our beauty oil Okay. The dry oil, it penetrates deeply. I mean, I love that. What oil? Like, what's what um, oil is it? It's our original beauty oil from is our it line. Is it like a green seed it's, oil? It's, it has oil. a blend of like hover is in it. It love. has like nine oils that mimic the sebum level of the skin. Love. And yeah. so it feels like nothing. It feels weightless. I love oils that you don't feel the weight of them, yes. right? That um, penetrate quickly. So that's one of my my faves. Okay. I'm going to have to try that product. I love asking people that are beauty experts if they've made beauty mistakes because I feel like we all make beauty mistakes. Are there beauty mistakes that you can think of that you have made? And mistakes are a good thing too, right? Because sometimes mistakes help us learn what not to do. Yeah. You know, I think... The beauty mistakes that I've made personally um, before I knew better was to follow, try and follow trends. Because mm. everything is not for everybody, right? And it's like, like, what is your face? Like, what works for you, right? And that's something, like, I've I've done some things. That, <laughs> what, what were the trends that you were trying to follow? Okay, well, how about, like, thinning my eyebrows? 
Okay, let you know all the Gen Z girlies are doing that oh, now. Thin eyebrows yes. are having a moment. Yes, if I my, if my eyebrows were thin right now, I would look seventy two. <laughs> like, it's like my you face was brows. not. Thank you. My face was not designed to have thin brows, and I right. went through that phase. Like, I mean, pencil thin line. Like, I yeah. got rid of them all, and I'm like, this is not for you. Yeah, this well, it's not for you. It can be kind of a vibe though. I've been I've been seeing some people do the very thin eyebrow trend and it kind of looks cool for, you know, but that's the thing. It's like everyone has their own little thing. But I think what made it a mistake for so many people like in the early 2000s was the fact that the brows were gone, right? Like yeah. they're not going to come back after all of this tweezing. Yeah. And- like literally the last thing you'll ever see me do like regularly is wax or tweeze. Like I'm like anti because I'm like I'm trying to right. bring you back. I'm trying to preserve these little hairs. Like now yeah. they're precious because they, it doesn't go back the same. It doesn't. I have zero lashes I because I'm I was very aggressive there. It's like. It's just Your like, lashes look beautiful, by the way. So are these lash extensions? No, these are strips. strips these are okay. strips in my collection. I actually have on two pairs of lashes. Oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> another, adds to, another thing I'm adding to my cart after this discussion. I was wondering when you were talking about your love of cleansing oils, because I also love cleansing oils, and that's like the number one reason why I don't have lash extensions, because I'm like, how am I going to do yeah, my nighttime routine? Yeah, can't get there, yes. Okay, so these are strips. What's mm. the name of this? Is This is the Thrive series. This okay. Is Thrive Ordering one. tonight. Yes. It looks so good. I got you. Now, <laughs> you have incredible video content. Um, I know you also have a background as a photographer. You really just do it all. But the video content is so great, and it's so empowering for me because I feel like I watch your videos, whether it's you That's or you so doing cool. it on a model. I'm like, oh, I can I can maybe do this. Yay. Um, but I also just want to say that I think you have some of the most incredible looking models that I have seen from any brand. Do you do the casting yourself? Are you involved? Yeah. I mean, literally, it's through my phone. Yeah. <laughs> literally, you find like great people reach faces. Out. I think it's the energy of the people mm. I'm telling you because yeah. it's really just like it's a vibe. It's a vibe in the DMs. It's yes. A, and I just think it's the energy that people are feeling because people say that all the time, but most of the models that I use are like regular women who just become muses for me like I have so many people that I work with who weren't even models before but just now they are right because they're out in the world and they saw their possibility but I think it's the energy that makes sense that makes sense do you also think that the energy in which you approach makeup makes you able to pull it off or not and to phrase that question differently people will say oh I'd love to do like a blue shadow but I can't pull it off oh my god that's always my favorite thing people always feel that until yes. you put it on them and like oh me yeah yes. like yeah I, um that's my favorite thing to do is to open somebody up and give them something that they've never done before right. And it could work in the reverse, too. There are some people who I meet when they feel like when they do makeup, it has to be full on, like, Mm -hmm. because that's makeup on them. And then I'll do something that's so soft and delicate, and they're like, oh, actually, this is really nice. You know what I mean? So I think it works in both ways. But you're 100% right. Yeah, it's like if you think you, if you have the energy, if I can pull this off, you can pull it off. Like, it's that simple. What's the last beauty moment that really excited you? Hmm, Just in general in the industry? I love that people are just kind of doing their own thing. Like if you want to put a star on your eyebrow, that's makeup for you. If you like taking paint and and squiggling it all over your face and that's makeup for you, that's for I think I love seeing people be so expressive mm-hmm. and not care about a rule that somebody told them or something that they saw in a magazine. It's like, this is what I'm feeling and I'm doing it. And I love that those things later become trends because people see it and they're like, oh, it opens people up. Yes. Even if it's something that you would never do, it opens you up to do something else, to explore your feelings as it relates to makeup. So this whole idea of just like people creating their own magic, whether they see it somewhere or not, that's what really turns me on. Yeah, it's incredible. And are there products that you've been excited about? Not from your brand, mm-hmm. maybe not even makeup, but a fragrance or a skincare item or something for the home where you've been like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm like excited about this. Because for me, I feel like I've become a little bit jaded because I just see a lot of stuff. Um, but sometimes I'll find something and I'm like, okay, I'm like fired up about this. Yeah, I'm trying to like think about because I, I do see a lot of things. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm really like falling in love with taking care of my body like 
mm. below the neck. Yeah. Right. Yes. Like the time, like uh, massaging my hands or having beautiful creams on my body. I'm obsessed with the brand 57 Thrones. Yes, of course. I. I love those butters and um, she just launched like a new butter that's like barrier repair for Ooh. the body. And we, we, you know, we, we spend so much time on our face, you yes. know, the skin on our face, but I'm exploring like, okay, yeah. how can, what can we do about these knees and, <laughs> <laughs> and everything else? So yes. I think I'm, I'm living in a body space right now. Body care is great. Now, would you ever extend like full, really ex- extend skincare for yeah, you know, I just always want to do things that are thoughtful and that people yes. can believe in, right? Yes. So if like tomorrow I launched a skincare line, it was like, with what authority? From where, right? Well, so I want I want people to to really believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a possibility. I think we're in this hybrid space right now. It's authentic um, to me and to you know what we're creating. But I never say never. Yeah. I have ideas. <laughs> okay, we're we're, we're going to be stay, staying tuned. Now, what do you think? I've heard you talk about 2020. Obviously, there was this influx of attention around black brands. Mm-hmm. Some of it was thoughtful. Some of it wasn't. Some yeah. of it was very performative. Um, what do you think needs to still change about the beauty industry today? I think um, what you just said, to like not be so reactive oh, somebody made 40 shades, I'm going to make 40 shades too. Oh, somebody made 50 shades, I'm going to make 52. Right. Somebody made 100 shades, I'm going to make 100 too. Just be, just be reactive, just trying to... Um, I'd rather it be, to your point, more thoughtful and more responsive to the needs and, and the, the voices of the people who are asking. You know, um, I think a lot of it has been performative, although there have been brands who have definitely like leaned in um, to make some significant change. I think, you know, if I think about the conversations that were happening in 2020 versus the conversations that are happening now, it's like, well, what was 2020? What had happened? Then? It's like, right. it's, you know, um, I was on social the other day and I saw and someone posted that um, a brand that they fell in love with had finally made a shade for them after 2020 and then now she's barely got into using it and they've discontinued it and so for me if you've never catered to a specific audience before and you just made a shade you can't expect for that them to be showing up and living and breathing um through your brand if you didn't do more if you're not reaching out to that person if you're not creating more for that person so i think dig a little deeper everyone right and just um, if you're going to commit, really commit. And to know that it's not something that's going to happen overnight. If you're committed to building this new relationship with n- new audiences, then commit and just yeah. be there. Yeah. Especially if you say you know how important it is, right? Absolutely. But to your point about listening to your audience and hearing what they actually want, I don't think a lot of founders are in the DMs way you are. I remember the first time we had an exchange on my Naked Beauty account. I was like, wait, this is, I was like, I'm typing with Danessa right now. Everybody like, asked me, is this you, Danessa? I'm like, yeah, it's you know, me. It's, like, it's shocking, <laughs> right? Because it's rare. It's rare. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of I can't think of very many brands where like the founder is actually there. I mean, you have nearly about a million followers at this point. We'll get in there. Yeah. Like, I mean, you've got a, you're, the DMs must be <laughs> vast, right? But it shows in the work and the content and the products that you are in touch with your community. You. Like that, that comes that. across, you know? I mean, it's because of the community that I'm here. Mm-hmm. Like there mm-hmm. are people who know me from the very first makeup that I did. There are people who know me from like way back in Browner Brothers days when I was like there like teaching or selling DVDs when I didn't even have product. There are people who've been following my journey and championing for me. Um, uh, And so I want them to know that I'm still here for them too, right? I mean, or who are we creating for, right? We're creating for the people, right? And I, uh, the voices in my DMs and on my pages have really helped evolve the brand. Yes. Because you don't know what you don't know. You know, sometimes we're in our own heads or we're we're talking to ourselves. And you and when you hear what other people have to say of their perspective of how they see your brand, it really opens you up to an understanding. Like these are people at the end of this color right. fix, right? right? At the end of this bomb powder. Who is that face? You know, I need to know who you are. I need to see you in your life. Um, I, I want to see you in the street and how you're using it. And if you're 
actually calling me and telling me, hey, through the DMs, hey, I love this because or this doesn't work because like that's a gift. True. That's a gift. Yeah. So I just really try and just be in there as much as possible. That's amazing. Yeah. A lot of people would just rely on the data from their website. Um, but it's just, it's not the same. It's no. not the same as that real feedback. The cheek and lip palette, which a makeup artist introduced me to, um, Bobby Riley, who she said she met you. I love Bobby. Bobby. Wow. What, what a special. He is, yeah. Bobby's amazing. Um, that is such an incredible product. And I feel like one of the things that I think makes your product stand out for me is this the two in one, the, the multi use of your products, right? We have all these conversations about sustainability and mm -hmm. one, you make products that last a long time, but two, most of your products can do more than one thing. And that's by design. Yeah. Um, talk to me about that cheek and lip palette because it's gorgeous and it's so great to have two products that can do. Sorry, one product that can do multiple things. Yeah, I'm like obsessed with that. Actually, that's how I started in makeup. Like I didn't have money to buy makeup as a makeup artist. And how I learned to build my kit is by making things do lots of things. Like I used to go to the uh, the store and buy a 99 cent pencil, crack off the wood, melt it down into something that was flat and and use it like everywhere on the face. It's how I started. I was like, I need this to do lots of things. Be on the face, be, it's a cheek, be on the lip, be on the eye. So it's how I evolved as an artist. Um, first, with just as a lack of funds, you know, I had to be super resourceful. But then I was like, okay, well, this makes sense. And then I would look at, you know, when you start to understand as an artist how products work, it's really like pigments and texture, right? And so I couldn't imagine just making a thing and saying it's a one thing without telling you all the other things that this thing can do. So it just really is a baseline of how we create. I love the Dewy Lip and Cheek Palette. I think some of the easiest makeup that somebody can do is like uh, monochromatic or, you know, following the same tones throughout the face mm -hmm. or like following a, 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 a texture similarly throughout the face. Like it looks good on everybody and it's easy for everybody to do. And that palette was just, it was really born from that. What's easy that you could do with your finger, you could put it in multiple places, and you're going to look gorgeous, yeah. and it's going to feel good on your skin. Um, and that's where that that palette was born. And in colors that everybody could see themselves living in. Yes. and But also nude. The definition of nude is sometimes very limited. Yes. Um, but this is like a true range of, of nudes. Yes, because for nude for me is like super berry chocolate. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um but I also like to play in like some of the uh, lighter, more beigey tones. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So I love that you, you you saw that. Yeah. And one of the things that I love to do is to create palettes that live across a range of skin tones. So that do lip and cheek palette, whether you get the one that has the pinks and the oranges or you have mm -hmm. the ones that have the berry browns and the, and the lighter peaches, like every skin tone can use it. So we really took the time to like curate the shades. Like you can't make a mistake. It's going to work for everyone. Yes. It's such a fabulous product. Now Thank I'm going to be a little bit nosy and in your business okay. now. <laughs> Bobby shared with me that in one of your master classes, you were saying like everything in my life is going great except for dating. <laughs> and I just, and she said it was a few years ago. So I'm like, now I need an update. <laughs> Are we are we finding time to date in the midst of also being the CEO and running this huge company? And we're gonna say no, no. Okay, but I think honestly, it's probably by design. <laughs> I, when it's right, it'll and, happen. It'll happen. Yeah, I'm not forcing anything. I really do love where I'm prioritizing my time. Yeah. Uh, we have some work to do. Yes. You know what I mean. And if somebody can flow through and fit in that space. Welcome. Welcome. I <laughs> yeah. get it. I get it. Now, are you able to have fun with friends, self-care? Like, are you able to, ca like, in, and, and sometimes the reality is like, no, I don't have time. <laughs> but in this, like, time of really building your business and expanding, are you yeah. also able to take care of yourself? I'm working on that. I'm being very thoughtful about it. And what I've learned is if I don't put it in my calendar yes. as a thing, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Because it's so easy to not prioritize yourself. And I'm very grateful that I have people in my life who will constantly remind me, like, slow down. Stop. Yes, you can stop to have coffee right now yes. with me and just talk about what's happening. Yes. Who was that lives. person for you? Oh, first of all, 
I have a best friend of now 23 years. Her name is Nefertiti Nguvu. She's the most magical human on the planet. She constantly reminds me. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, I really love my entire team. I, I honestly think I work with all my friends. I hire people who I want to spend time with, to be honest. Like, I really do curate the people who are around me, and they're so thoughtful, and they take good care of me. When they see I'm not taking good care of myself, they remind me, like, stop, we got this. You know, so I'm super, super grateful. That's really important to have around you, because sometimes you can't see it when you're in it. You can't see it, and sometimes you need that person to say, just maybe stop. Take Pause. a lunch break. Yeah. Feed something. yourself something. Something. Have some water. <laughs> or like, yeah, go get your toes done. You need it. <laughs> <laughs> right. My final question for you is, when do you feel most beautiful? Wow. What a question. I feel most beautiful when I'm being authentic to me, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm just deciding I want to be this thing in this moment and and owning it. Because for me, so much of my life was not that. It was trying to make myself fit into mm-hmm. other people's spaces. And now I feel beautiful when I'm just relaxing into my own. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What an incredible answer. Well, thank you so much for sharing so openly. It's been such a like honor, honestly, to talk to you and hear. This has been such a joy. I like literally thank you so much. Like I'm so honored to be here talking with you. And you're seriously like an angel. (laughs) You're so relaxing. I literally just felt like I went through um, a therapy session, a (laughs) massage. I had the coffee, like all the things. Like you're pretty awesome. Love to hear it. Thank you so much, (laughs) Janessa. Thank you.